well done, you fucking racist. Well done for being allowed to be such a thing and continue to enjoy football matches. And nothing be done about it. Well done um, to the game, to the game, to the people who are in charge and the people who should be coming down on people like this um, at every game. Well done to the people around this disgusting excuse for a human being who never said anything about it, um, who didn't turn back and look at him and say, what, what are you, what, what's that about? Why, why do we have to go there? Now, the idea that there's so many things in a football match that you can say, so many things um, to, to, to players of, of rival teams, or not even rival teams, but the players of teams that are going against your team, for that to be the first thing that comes into your mind, it's just, it's, it's incredible, man. And, and um, surely there'll be people making excuses saying it's not a big deal and Liverpool fans are using this as an excuse again. It's, it's not an excuse. Um, it's, it's, it's just disgusting. And I just wanted to start with that because um, it's it's just a huge, huge issue in general, obviously, um, in the world, uh, but particularly in the football, which, you know, for me, football is similar to chess, if you will. Um, it should be able to trans- transcend all of these different foolish behaviors and racism and bigotry and sexism and homophobia. I mean, it's it's a game of football. You know, but yet it, it can't even be that because you have disgusting people like that. Um, I'm going to segue this slightly, um, even though this is slash football slash not, but because John Barnes felt the need to give his two cents, um, I'm going to speak about that and then I'll get into some of the things that I'm here to really talk about. Um, we all know Liam Nielsen, Nielsen, whatever his name is, actor from Taken, famously known from that more than anything else I would imagine worldwide. Um, recently had an interview where, for some reason, he wanted to admit to basically being racist. Basically wanting to kill a black man or a black person, anyone that he could find at one point in his life because someone close to him, family, relative, friend, whatever, um, was raped by a black man. So in his mind, he thought, well, let me go out and hang around these different pubs and um, hopefully one of these, you know, um, black basses, I think is what he called it, would give me a, a reason to kill them or they'll say something to me and that'll just make me um, switch. So John Barnes comes in and basically gives this guy a pass saying that it was a long time ago, he should be forgiven, yada, yada, yada. And, and, and this is the thing, I'm sure John Barnes is probably, uh, would probably put his name in the basket of people who are linked to this kicking racism out. And, and this is why I say things like that, while it seems like a, a valiant thing to do, I'm not sure it really is doing the job it's supposed to be doing, which is kicking racism out. Um, and then when you have people like this, again, I'm assuming John Barnes is um, a supporter of kicking racism out or whatever. I, I, would, I would assume that he would jump on that train. Um, but nothing really is done. And I, I, it's easy to say that because these things continue to happen. And I doubt this guy will get a ban. I doubt that anything will come down on him. It'd be nice if it did, but I, I doubt it. And, that, and this is the thing, you know, in general, People feel like they can say whatever they want to say and it not be dealt with. You know what I mean? And um, So it's highly disappointing, but it is what it is at the end of the day because, again, no one's really doing anything about it. It's not enough to just be talking about it and posting it on Twitter and things of that nature. I'm glad it was posted on Twitter. Uh, I think by Neek Sport, so shout out to Neek Sport, for, um, as I said to you on, on Twitter, for, for the awareness. And it's, it's good to see brothers in the U.K. who... Um, are actually standing for something because there's plenty who aren't as 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 to uh, the plenty that that here on the home soil in America who don't moving on past that um want to talk about a few things um and this is more just for uh conversation um maybe a bit of devil's advocate things of that nature but segue into clock just done with the racist stuff um is clap a sore loser it's something I've been thinking about the last couple of days. Um, there was a tweet that came out about all the different things that Klopp has made excuses for or whined about. as anything from a dry pitch to it being hot, the wind, the rain, the snow, and, and all um, situations where we're, we're not getting um, wins. Maybe draws and some of them, some of them losses. But the common denominator is that they've been in games that we haven't gotten results in probably most games that we just haven't performed well let's be honest um because as we all know 
the conditions, the pitch, it's the same for everybody. So I've never been one to really complain about elements and you know, that's the creator. The God does that. There's nothing anybody could do about it but deal with it and play your game. So um, here recently against the West against West Ham, um, if you watch the game at the end of the game, he had some words to say to Pellegrini, and um, he didn't look too happy. Pellegrini didn't seem to, to back down, though. He said some things back to him, and then obviously in his post-match saying how Klopp is used to winning um, games like this with offsides goals. I guess years ago when Pellegrini was at Malaga, and I'm just, yeah, it's got to be, I guess, when Klopp was at Dortmund, um, apparently Dortmund beat Malaga, I'm assuming, in a European game. And, um, you know, it was, according to Pellegrini, seven meters off. So um, he had some things to say about the, the refereeing in the post-match, which I, I'm allegedly uh, he's being questioned about that to explain what he really meant. The FA is pulling him up on that. Um, look, I spoke about it, and I said it before, and I even tweeted it. You know, for all the times that we complain about things like that, the weather, the referee, or whatever, we should be thankful for that that result at West Ham because um, it's an offside goal. And if Origi finishes, the assist should have been an assist from from Naby. It's two offside goals, and we win two one. Um, so, as, as I've always said, and maybe you, some of you have called me deluded or, or just saying that I, I'm not recognizing referee errors or whatever. Um, you get the good, you get the bad. And I doubt any of you would be taking the the good, the bad for another team, and complaining. Oh man, we won two. If we would have won that game, we won two one, but they were two all size goals. No, you you take the win. You know it happens. Um, because we're done wrong sometimes. The next team is done wrong sometimes. We get some luck sometimes. The next team gets some luck sometimes. It's part of the game. Um, so personally, what I would say is I think Klopp has a funny way of of. You know, and it's funny because I think Mourinho was able to, and I heard this in a podcast. I don't want to make it seem like this is an, an original or my own uh, thought here, but I thought it was interesting, so I'm bringing it up. I forget the podcast. I'd love to remember so I can give them credit or whatever, but I agree with this, and it was basically a sentiment of, you know, Mourinho might be a bit more clever with it, the things he's, because Mourinho will do things like this uh, all the time. You know, or used to. He's not, he's not managing now, but he'll deflect from maybe a really bad performance from his team to kind of point blame to refs, ball boys, whatever the case may be. They said he's a bit more cerebral than Klopp. I don't know if I believe that, but I think there's an argument for it. Um, but I wish Klopp, because Klopp will, a lot of times, which is really is baffling to me, that he'll always bring up, you know, his English not being good. And I mean, let's be real, his English is pretty damn good compared to a lot of other foreign managers. So. I'm not sure why he always says that, but if he wants to say that, I, w- I wish that sometimes he would bring that up and just remain quiet when it comes to certain things because more times than not, let's be honest, and I love Klopp, I think all of us do, a lot of things that he says seems like excuses, you know what I mean? Um, by the end of the whist- by the end of the game, the final whistle, clearly he would have known, I would imagine. I think in the post-match he said he didn't know until after the game, which, okay, fair enough, I'm not going to th- say he's lying, but that seems a little bizarre. I would think at halftime, when they're looking through things, you would see that. But what do I know? Um, but you would have known that your team was very lucky to even get a point, to even get that goal. You know, imagine us losing that game, that goal not counting as it shouldn't have. Um, and let's, let me just say this, too. I know there was a moment there where Salah was called off sides in that game, and he wasn't. He was way on sides. Um, but, again, it goes it, – it, it, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And so for Klopp to complain about, you know, them making the decision and then the rest of the game, them trying to go against us because they felt bad is, you know, again, that the, how you rule that out is that it didn't look like the guy was going to put the flag up for the Origi chance. Origi's chance was very tame, very weak, very soft, and it kind of just summed up the, the performance altogether. Um, very tame, very weak, very soft. Um, so I like to just see him, you know... I, I don't know what's in his mind. I'm not telling him what to say, but I, I like him to end this whole thing of making excuses, talking about the pitch, talking about the conditions. And, you know, when you get more into the, you know, the players and, and just being disappointed overall from a performance, that's what I want to hear. And being disappointed maybe with himself, with the, not saying he did anything wrong, but I'm just saying you could that could be an argument as well. Um, you know, and I know Milner apparently was six, still played. Um, the last minute knocks to to um, or muscle issues or whatever they were for for Hendo, Lovren, and whoever else, you know, you you can't really account for that, you know what I mean? But 
that's more of something maybe I, w- I can accept, you know, talking about your team in that way than, than it is trying to deflect from an atrocious performance, really. And that's really back-to-back atrocious games. That might be single-handedly the best or the, the, the worst performance we've had. You think about Red Star, that was pretty bad as well. Um, so I think they're probably both under the same umbrella, just really, really bad performances. And I think that's what needs to be the talking point. And it's okay to, to be disappointed in how we're playing. Um, you don't go off the deep end, like, say, a drifty or someone else who's very pessimistic um, and, and say that the league is over. You know, you put things in perspective and you say that, you know, we're, we're three points ahead still. Um, and, yes, there's an assumption that, you know, all or nothing FC will beat Everton and Everton would gladly take a defeat, which is also a losing mentality. But I don't know the the real battle and, and hate that they, they might be between blues and reds and maybe there are some Everton fans well clearly there are I've seen it on Twitter who are who are glad to take the loss um to to to, to all or nothing FC and then hopefully get something against us when we play them um at their place so uh it's an interesting dynamic man but uh you know for me I'm, I'm remaining positive I'm remaining positive um and it's not a blind faith it's I'm a supporter that's what look I'm not going to con- question guys like Drifty and their support whatever they support the team totally different than when I support it that's fine. Everyone has their way of doing it. Um, so, but for, as for me, and, and as I'm concerned, and what I like to see are supporters who actually support the team. Um, you, you can't end messages on Twitter or in conversation or sing "You'll Never Walk Alone." You know, YNWA if you're not supporting them because of a draw. Um, so, you know, and again, I talked about it before. The numbers, it's you know, mathematics, man. It's Numbers are funny, you know, and it's frustrating because, you know, we've lost one match all all season in the Premier League, and and to be in this situation is frustrating. To 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 have a to have a situation where we could have gone ten clear, seven clear, five clear to be down to three. Yes, it is frustrating, and yes, I really really hope Liverpool get their act together. Um, but at the same token, I I don't think we've done it again. This team hasn't done anything again. Um, this team hasn't been in a in a this particular squad hasn't been in a title fight. Um, you can say Henderson, I think Menulay in that the last season that we we were, but I think we're far better. And to say that there's you know the Benitez team was better, any other team was better, is a bit strange to me. Um, listen, we've we've gotten out of jail with some luck, no question. We, and and I don't really need to run those games through, but you know um, you need that. And this team has to stick together more than any other time ever. Um, and also the fan base. You know, so uh, segue in from that to, to, to Nabi. Listen, I love Nabi Keita, and um, I'm, I'm not going to continue to really profess that love or, or try to get people on board on the bandwagon and, and trust and see what he can do. But I will say, if you have eyes and you watch football, and not in a, in a professional sense, like not a talent scout, but you, you watch football, you know that this guy is an amazing player. Um, and, you know, you could, the second half he was, I thought, much improved from the first um, the thing that does bother me about Nabby, and I have to just be honest, is that he does seem a bit soft in the tackle. He does seem a bit not really up for challenges necessarily or really working hard to get balls back. Um, he gets bounced off balls pretty easily. Um, but again, I think that with time, with him getting acclimated to the to the game here in, in, in or not here, but in England, I think that'll come. That's the least of my worries. Um, and again, second game in a row where there was a moment that if it would have gone – well for us it could have really gone well for him ultimately you know um, you think about the game at, at Leicester if he one takes that shot because I think he, he could have taken a shot before he was even um, had his foot stepped on by I think Pereira was um, and then in this game if if Origi finishes the goal so those you know it's all small margins around players who are trying to get acclimated to a team and, and trying to just get some confidence and, and, and um, some consistency back in their game so He's been getting the chances. I think this last game probably got it because of injuries to um, uh, Hendo, Genie, Milner being sick, but kind of, I guess, in Klopp's mind, being the only guy there. Um, but I'm not worried about Nappy. Um, but speaking of Milner again, um, as, as good as he's been for this team, he just, I think we've got to put Rafa Camacho there. Um, that you saw so many times when he catches on the counter. And we didn't help our situation again. It was a abysmal performance, but giving the ball away that many times, ill-advised giving away, like not really even necessarily being pressured all the time. Firmino was atrocious. 
I mean, so many balls. I'd love to see his pass stats because he gave the ball away so much, so easily. Just really lazy on the ball. And I hate to even use the word lazy when it comes to football players, but for me, that's the best way to describe Firmino's performance. And him coming off with Origi, I think, was the best thing we could have done. Maybe should have done it early because I think Origi coming on, although he missed that last chance, he was showing something different. And that could be it's late in the game, guys are tired. Whatever the case may be, though, this is why you bring on guys with fresh legs that can make a spark. And I think it's really unfortunate for Origi um, that he didn't get that more for himself um, than the team, really, because I think getting something like that, it gives you that much more confidence to, to, to tell Klopp, like, look, I've done it for you twice now. Um, didn't happen for us, so so it is what it is. But, uh, you know, um, we just got to bounce back. We just got to bounce back. Um, uh, so, you know, I mean, again, that that really, we probably didn't really even deserve that on on, on the, 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 based on how we played in that game, to be honest. So, um, I said it before, and, and, you know, I'm looking forward so much to this game uh, at the weekend um, against Bournemouth. I think a team like that, uh, lately we've been seeing, used to being, seeing Liverpool playing against teams that are going to frustrate you, low block, defensively, set pieces, catch you on the counter, things of that nature. I think being able to play against a team like Bournemouth that, that's led by a manager who, who's, in his mind, he thinks, look, I, I trust in my team. I believe in my tactics, and I think we can go toe to toe. And they've shown that against um, big teams. Um, what they did against Chelsea could happen to a lot of big teams, and and I think it could happen to us if we're not ready. You know, it could really happen to us. Now, I think again, it, it bows in our favor that um, they are more of an open attacking team. They're not going to sit eleven guys behind the ball. They will come at you. Um, but if we play like we played in the last couple of games, specifically West Ham, um, we could be even more so upset um, at the weekend. So I look for Liverpool to just bounce back. You know, it's two situations where uh, we should have been better. And I think we need to be very, very happy, um, which sounds crazy because I know we didn't win the game, but we should be happy that we didn't lose these two games um, because we could have easily done that. And I think more so in the Leicester game. West Ham, for me, never it never looked like a game that they were going to win, but it surely didn't think, it didn't, it didn't appear to be a game that we could win. Um, and that's frustrating because, all season, we've been able to kind of grind results out. <clears throat> Not always look pretty, um, but look better than we did against West Ham. Much better, actually. Even some of the one nils, um, some of the tighter games, we always looked like we could, you know, snatch a win. Um, but in this game, it just it just never was was meant to be. Apparently, it never looked like it was gonna be. So, um, gotta be better. There's no no getting around that. We have to be better, and it's not enough to just blame the fact that we have injuries. At this point in the season, a lot of teams have a lot of teams have injuries. You know, I spoke about Lucas Spurs. They haven't spent money since since Lucas Mora, which was I guess a year ago now, or about a year, if not a full year ago. So, you know, they're missing um, Dele Ali. They're missing Kane. You know, big proponents of what they do going forward. It's it's a good thing. It's a blessing that they got Son back because I think he kind of flies under the radar somehow. I think he might be. Um, their best attacking player. I mean, with, even with Kane there, I think Son is probably a guy who steps up bigger uh, in bigger situations for them. But enough about other teams. I think Liverpool really, really need to just stay the course and um, and find a way to bounce back and get back into winning ways. I believe they will. Um, and I'm okay if I'm in a minority that thinks that. I really I, I, I really could care less what, what the other fans think. I mean, um, I'm not the type of person that allows that to rub off on me. I think for myself... I don't care if James Pierce is saying negative things or considered negative things or crying about or whining about not getting somebody in January or letting Klein go. Couldn't care less. I'm my own man. I think for my own self. And so, and my thinking is that we'll be fine. My thinking is that this is still our league to win. Um, we're in a good position still, um, even with these disappointing results. So um, just got to pick it up, though, because um, as the cliche goes, you know, every game is is a semifinal now. Every game is really, really important. And I've said it before, these teams will be gunning for Liverpool. Um, you know, you got guys like, uh, what's the midfielder for, for a noble coming out saying that they scared us? Well, you know, to be fair, and I, I don't think Klopp took too nicely to that, and I can understand why he wouldn't, but to be fair, it did seem like there was a little bit of, I don't know, scared, but nervousness. You know, are we going to get out of this? Do we have enough? You know what I mean? And, and, you know, these guys are human. They, they're, as much as they want to say BPC and say they don't pay attention to it, um, they do, or they have relatives and friends who do, and it gets back to them. They know what we're saying about them on social media. Um, and so, you know, you would think that they could push that to the side and just 
perform and, and do what they're being paid amazing amounts of money to do and do it well. Uh, I know Milner came out and said someone asked him about being upset about being in the situation that we are now. And he answered the way that you would hope that he would answer. But, you know, I don't I don't know that none of those players are feeling maybe similar to some of the pessimistic or negative or nervous fans. Um, just a human thing. So uh, really, really just excited about the game. Uh, be back before now and then to do a bit more breakdown analysis into um, how Bournemouth may look, uh, their key players, how we may look after two um, not so uh, uplifting performances um, and things of that nature, injuries, all the stuff that we usually do here. So thanks for your time. Whoever comes by to check it out. Appreciate it. And uh, we will see you soon.